Welcome to this watercolor gathering for the Dick Sugar House or sugaring season. Um, this is the original watercolor that I did um, quite a number of years ago that we used as inspiration for this watercolor gathering. Here is the completed painting that I have just completed from that watercolor gathering. I didn't finish it during the class because I didn't have time. And in fact, I'm thinking I like this one better than the first one. So anyway, here we go. So I'm away at the moment and uh, I don't have my usual supplies or studio set up. So I am currently using my travel um, painting set. And so this is a Winsor Newton um, travel set. It's small and compact and easy to pack. A round brush, my new uh, pointed rigger brush, um, and uh, the, so those are the brushes I'm using currently, although when I first started this, I used a, a larger mop brush. Anyway, um, just uh, cleaning up the um, steam and smoke that's coming out of the sugar house. Uh, it needed to be a little um, less intense. And then uh, that shadow in the background, just um, feathering it out a little. And then completing the barn boards on the front of the sugar house using a mixture of sepia and um, burnt sienna and just further defining the trim around the doorway and the windows. And also adding a little detail to the shed in the background, a little bit more, so you can kind of see the barn boards in that, but um, not so much detail in that one. And then on the roof line, um, I'm putting in a little bit, um, some, some idea of having ridges in that uh, metal roof um, with maybe some wet snow dripping down it, making sure to go in the same direction as the angle of the roof line. And now I'm going to work on the trees in the foreground. Um, there were some already painted in, um, but they needed a little bit more intense color in them, so I went over them a little. Um, and I'm uh, sort of taking care to uh, make sure that I'm putting them in the correct place behind the snowbank, if you see that, that um, I'd already put in the shadow of the snowbank, and that those trees are behind the snowbank. And then also uh, to fill in some of the trees that are kind of in that mid-ground, so a little bit further back than those trees in the foreground. And as they go back, um, you should try and put a lighter mixture of the color, i.e. a little bit more water in it. And that also helps to put those in the mid-ground. Um, and then as you have less and less paint on your brush, um, add the trees in that background and start them at that uh, horizon line where the um, edge of the snow meets the um, sky or that background. And as you can see, I'm putting quite a number of those in there. And then just cleaning up that edge there to um, make it so that it's more even in that background. And then once I've got the sort of right amount of trees in that area, 
uh, you can start work on the uh, branches. And when I do branches, I'm using a very fine rigor brush. And I start at the trunk and then pull out and lift up as I go. That way you have a larger branch at the junction with the trunk and a finer end of the branch um, when it ends out because um, they get smaller as they get to the end. And then add more branches to those um, main branches coming out from the trunk. Now uh, I'm using a mixture of Payne's Gray, maybe a little bit of Ultramarine mixed in, and but very wet, um, lots of water, and just adding those to the tops of those trees in the background to give them more depth. Um, it gives a suggestion of them having more branches. Now we're going to work a little on the front of the snow banks. Um, it's on a main road and the dirt gets washed up into the snow. Um, and so I'm using the side of my rigor brush to add that detail in. And then there is a bit of a driveway uh, with some mud in it in front of the sugar house. So I'm just putting that in with a um, little bit of sepia um, very loosely and then adding a little bit more detail to the wood pile. Just adding in some shadows in between the logs. Now we're going to, I'm going to start adding the trees on the right hand side um, and there's some trees that are behind the sugar house so it's coming up out at the top of the sugar house and then it's behind the steam and smoke coming out of the sugar house so you have to leave a blank spot in between where the steam is coming up through the trees and that adds depth to your painting. These next trees are behind the wood pile, but in front of the shed. Um, but they're still behind the steam, so um, you leave a blank spot there to show that you have that steam coming out of the sugar house. And now you add in the trees the same in the same manner as we did the trees on the other side. Now we're going to add some more shadows to the snowbank, uh, just to define that uh, larger snowbank in the front. Just a mixture of Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue. And then the same mixture um, with some shadows in the snow to give it a little bit more depth um, and, and have them have a hard line at the top and a soft line at the bottom, just feathering it out with, with a damp brush. And continuing that both sides. Now I'm going to add in some more um, grass and scrub coming out behind those snow banks just to add a little bit more detail to that foreground and midground at the base of the trees mostly. 
And now with a similar mixture of Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue, we're going to put shadows in for the trees. Um, and these shadows all have to be at the same angle going across the foreground. And I'm going almost off the paper. Um, and that too adds a lot of depth to your painting. I'm just going to add a few more branches. And then again, a very pale mixture of Payne's Gray and a little Altamimine Blue just to add some more depth to these trees. Give the impression of more branches up there. Hope you enjoyed this and hope it was helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Leave any comments that you might have below. Thanks a lot for joining me.